If you've been thinking about getting an electric vehicle, you have one on order, or maybe you already have one, what if I told you you could charge your electric vehicle using exclusively solar power? In this video, we're gonna discuss the various ways we can use solar equipment to charge an electric vehicle. We're gonna discuss why you may wanna do this, what's needed to make it work, and the various techniques we can use to make this successful. Hi, I'm James Hall, Engineering and Sales Manager at Nas Solar Electric, and today I'm helping you plug into solar. If you had the ability to use renewable energy to charge your electric vehicle, why wouldn't you? The solution isn't staring you in the face. It's shining down on you every day. It's not practical to generate fuel and to create fuel, but we can create our own electricity and we can use that electricity to charge our electric vehicles. The average American commutes about 40 miles per day and the average EV consumes only 300, 350 watt hours per mile. That ends up only being 10 to 15 kilowatt hours per day to power the EV. And this really isn't all that much energy. For most of the country, it might only take eight solar panels to generate that much renewable energy. The basic concept is quite simple. These solar modules take the sun's energy and converts it to DC power. We use inverters to convert that DC power or invert that DC power into usable AC power so that we can feed that into the home into the home's loads. EV supply equipment activates and controls the vehicle's charging load. And if the system is designed correctly, we can prioritize that as much as 100% of that solar energy is pushed into the vehicle. The concept is quite simple. However, there are multiple arrangements that can be used to maximize solar utilization and minimize grid dependency. That's where NAS comes in. We can help you put the right system together. Here's an example. We use the Wallbox Pulsar Plus. Now this is thought to be a charger, but really it's a contactor and a fancy computer. The actual charger is built into the vehicle. The Wallbox can communicate to the vehicle and tell the vehicle dynamically how much power it should draw from the charging system to deliver that power into the vehicle. We couple the Wallbox Pulsar Plus with the Carlo Gavazzi energy meter and it allows us to monitor circuit current. This allows for some interesting control over the EV charger. Let's just say you want to use only the solar power available to charge the electric vehicle. Well, we can use an energy meter to monitor that solar production and the wall box can be configured to see that production and direct that solar production to the vehicle during those periods of times. We can also set schedules on off peak periods, off solar peak periods to allow for additional charging of the vehicle to top it up. These days, we are trying to maximize self-consumption. To do this, we use an ESS or an energy storage system, basically a battery. We take excess solar energy during the day push that energy into the battery bank to store it for use in the future. This allows us to minimize our dependency on the grid and maximize the benefits of our renewable energy. Okay, we have the solar array up in the house and that solar array will produce DC energy and that's ran through microinverters and the AC output from those microinverters is fed into the common AC bus. Now, that energy when a car is plugged in could be going to the car. However, if the car is not plugged in, it can be directed to the main inverter system and into the battery bank. The system has batteries that can store like 60 miles worth of energy if I wanna use the battery capacity to, to recharge a car. Or that battery capacity can be used to offset loads during peak demand within the home and basically net the home's consumption from the grid to zero. So we can balance the use of the battery for the vehicle charging, the battery for the home, and that energy coming in from the solar array is going back through the main inverter that feeds the home in an AC coupled method that we use to then force that energy into the batteries, okay? It runs backwards through the inverter. Once the batteries are full and everything's satisfied within the home, that energy could be forced back to the grid to turn back the meter. 
Based on these same principles, we can use an ESS system to support completely standalone operation. Let's just say you park your vehicle where you're, there's no grid power available. An ESS system can be used to support completely off-grid EV charging. The possibilities are endless. All right, let's get technical. I want to talk about this nifty feature called boosting. Most EV SE equipment is fed from a circuit within the home. Now, depending on what was available to you, that circuit, you know, may be sufficient. Might have been ran. You might have ran a 60 amp circuit to the EV SE equipment, or you might have had a 40 amp available to you, or maybe you had a 30 amp available to you, or it might even be a shared circuit. We're gonna call that circuit a feeder circuit or a supply. Now, you could run that circuit to a load center that's rated to handle more current than that feeder circuit supplied. And we could add solar into that circuit, load center we'll call, uh, to increase the overall power available to the EVSE equipment. In essence, we're able to boost the power going to the EVSE equipment. So let's give you an example. So in my application, I have a 30 amp feeder coming into a load center. Now that load center is designed to handle 100 amps. So it can handle a ton of current, uh, but we are only providing it from the feeder 30 amps. So that allows us to draw 24 amps during charging continuous, uh, which equates out to about 5,800 watts at 240 volts, which is what a, a typical EV would charge with. That's about half as much current as the car can handle at full power charging. So the, e, the EVSC equipment that I have rated is 48 amps. And so we could charge at twice as much current, essentially, if we could just get it that current. Now, if we add solar into that load center that the EVSC equipment is connected to, Let's just say, for example, on my roof, I have three kilowatts. That's 12 amps of, of current that we're adding into that load center. Now, we can essentially take that 12 amps with the 24 amps of, of, from the supply feeder, okay? And we can, we can add that together. So it's 36 amps. So that increases the current going into the vehicle so we can charge faster, all right? Now, let's just say we have a six kilowatt array. We could do another 24 amps into that circuit, okay? That allows us to do 48 amps of charging power potentially to the vehicle. So we charge the vehicle at full power. So we can use the boosting feature essentially to boost that load. Now, obviously you wouldn't want more current going into the load center from your secondary supply, the solar, than your main feeder could support. And we use the EVSE equipment to monitor the current on the feeder circuit so that we never draw more power from the main source, the limited source, than what can be provided. But the boost feature is very handy if you have a limited feeder circuit for your EVSE equipment. If you're interested in solar charging your EV, give us a call, visit our website, chat with us, shoot us an email. Someone from our team can put something together for you. To learn more, visit our learning center, like, subscribe for more content like this.